Hey everybody, if you have a Behringer XR mixer, the 12, the 16, or the 18, and you also have a Behringer X touch controller, I bet a frustrating thing for you is when you make a selection on the controller like EQ, you don't see that reflected in your XR edit software. Well, I found a piece of software called OC MIDI that lets you do exactly that. When you make a selection like EQ, on the controller, it actually reflects those changes in the software. And I'm gonna show you how it works right now. Let's go. Okay, you can see I've got my X-Touch controller here. There's my x -Air Edit software, my mixer's over there, but you don't need to see that right now. What you need to see is how this control is working and how we're getting synchronization. So, you know, we've got fader control. We always had that. But what's great is things like channel select. Now, when you select something, you actually see it reflected on screen. Um, same if we jump through the controls with our side selection here, or we can jump to other channels. And then, you know, our selection will jump over there. It's pretty awesome. And what's really, really cool, my favorite part of this, is things like EQ and other parameters like compressors and gates. We now have access to these on screen with our controls up here. So let's say, for instance, we're on channel, channel 3, and we've selected our EQ. Now, when we change parameters, we're actually seeing those changes in real time on our screen, something we didn't have before. This is amazing if you are somebody who really needs visual feedback to know you're in the right place, making the right changes. You know, things like EQ, you should always use your ears, but if you're making a lot of changes in a short amount of time, say you're rushing through a sound check, it's good to know that you're in the right place doing the right thing. Um, sometimes it's not always clear from the, the feedback on the console that you're in the right place. This is just another way to know that you're in the right place doing the right thing. Amazing feedback that we didn't have before. So what we're going to do now is have a quick look at the software and talk about what's actually going on. Okay, first things first, let's look at the actual website. So this is the OZ MIDI stage website, and uh, I will link that in the description for you, of course. Um, this shows you all the so, uh, all the OSs you can actually use it on. You know, you have Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, and you can use it on Raspberry Pi, which is amazing. Let's have a look at the pricing really quickly. Uh, one license is 49 euro, and that is perpetual. It is not a subscription model. The only thing you need to be aware of is after a year, you can't get uh, new updates unless you sign up for their license renewal, which is another 24 euro. I have to assume that extends it one full year. Um, yep, one year of additional upgrades from the time of renewal. That's another 24 euro. Not crazy considering the price of software these days. Okay, so this is where you get it. And what we're gonna look at now is the software itself. So let me bring this up on screen. Here we go, so I'm already connected. You can, I'm gonna stop it right now actually. You can search for your connected mixer and uh, controller, um, which works unless you've got a connection error. The thing you need to be aware of is when you download the file, and install it, this X-Touch configuration is not going to be here. You can either try to build your own, um, going into the configuration editor and uh, doing a new configuration, naming it whatever you want, setting your stuff appropriately, and then going into your edit mode. I'm not gonna get into that today. What we are gonna look at is the available configuration that you can actually download right from the OC MIDI website. I've already downloaded it. I am going to link it on my site as well, so it's easy to find. But let's uh, let's just have a look at this. Uh, let's exit that. So we're back here. Now, what you need to do once you've downloaded it is go to File, oops, no, sorry, go to Configuration Editor, and you're going to want to import configuration. Find where you pulled that from your zip file, and you're going to load this export file. I don't need to do that, I've already done it, and it'll give me an error saying it's already loaded, so let's skip that. When you've loaded your X-Touch config, it will show up in this dropdown, and that's what you're gonna select. Now, I have this connected to my mixer with 
actual MIDI cables. You can't see it back here, but that's how it's connected. I also have a USB connected to my PC, and that's how I'm pulling in the device under MIDI controllers. So X-Touch for the in and X-Touch for the out. And then when you have that configured and it's searched and it's found your mixer, what you can do is then start the software. And as soon as you start the software, it's going to pull the window forward, your Xair Edit software, and it's going to put it in what's called in focus. Now there's a lot in the manual and in the instructions for this OC MIDI saying that you can't change window size and this has to be in the foreground. No other software windows can be in the foreground or else it won't work. Now, I haven't found that to be true. Um, that full size window that opens, obviously I have control, um, but you can see I've put it into the standard size window and I still have control. If I pull another window in front, I still have control. So your mileage may vary on this. It doesn't seem to affect my version. Um, it might affect yours. So if you find that to be the case, just remember to keep this window in focus in front. And if changing the size actually affects your setup, then leave it at the full screen window. But you can see that I have no issues here. It's working properly. Um, this little window down here, which you can move around, this is just to show you. You can close this window if you want in the in the options, you don't have to have it open, but it's just a feedback telling you what layer and controls you're actually in at any given time. I'm gonna open the main window again and I'm gonna stop this. Okay, so the mode that I am using on the X-Touch to actually connect is the Mackie control mode. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I'm gonna power off the device and I'm gonna hold the select button on channel one while powering back on. What that does, you might not be able to see it here um, just because of the contrast, but right here is the mode and here is the interface. So I'm in MC, which is for Mackie, and under IFC, I'm on USB. Now, it says there's other modes that it works in. Of the two that do work, this is the one that makes the most sense. So you can also connect to it in um, XCTL slash MC, which is X Control and Mackie and setting your IFC to MIDI. So what this does is if you have the MIDI cables, like I was saying, connected, you actually have normal control over your mixer with your surface. But what you can do is you can switch between normal control mode and Mackie control mode by hitting this button. So when you hit this button, it switches to the OC MIDI control, which gives you your full functionality and screen synchronization. The X control mode does not have that synchronization. And if you set it to regular, just X control mode, this software says it has a listen mode for X touch and X control where you will get the synchronization, but I've tried and it does not appear to work. Once again, your mileage may vary. It might work for you. But what I do know works and has all the layout proper functions the way we would expect it to is being in Mackie control mode. So MC and your interface being USB. So once you've chosen what you want, hit the select button. Now, this isn't going to jump to life right away because we actually have to start the software for that to happen. So right now it's waiting. And if I hit start, there you go. Now we are in OC MIDI and you can see we have our control. Once again, it full screened the software. I don't like to have that because I like to see other things on my screen and do other things. So I shrink it and there we go. I still have control. So just looking at a few more parameters here that actually show up with control is um, stuff like our, our effect returns and our buses. So we're still seeing synchronization, which is great and everything we do changes. And actually let's just, let's open up the utility here because I wanna have the DCAs visible and I want to have um, my buses visible just so you can see what's happening. So let's look at let's look at our bus number one. So you can see, I can see my send level going. Now it doesn't affect this because these are the actual um, outgoing levels. These are just the levels going from the input to the bus, but it's nice to be able to see. Um, same thing with the effects. Uh, um, and actually think, do we have 
there we go. We actually can see bus, con uh, sorry, DCA control happening here. Now, something that might jump out to you is that the layout is obviously different from the normal control mode between the X Touch and the X Air Edit software. And you might be thinking, oh man, how am I gonna get used to that? Well, aside from seeing what's here and actually having labels here to tell you what you're doing, um, the zip file that has the configuration also comes with a PDF that has stickers. So if you really need to, you can print these out and tape them on or try to print out some sort of template that fits over the controls. And this tells you what all these main controls actually do for you. I don't personally need it, but you might find that you do. And it's really nice to have that included. One final thing I wanted to point out before we actually finish up the video, and I think this is amazing. Normally, you do not have a mute button for your master fader when you have your X-Touch connected to your X-Air mixer. I, I think that's a glaring oversight by Behringer, but hey, whatever, it is what it is. But when you're using OC MIDI, you actually have a mute button. They've turned this global view button into a mute for your mains, which is amazing. And this flip button actually becomes a selection for your mains. Again, something else we didn't have, crazy town. Anyway, I just wanted you to be aware of that because it is a pretty good feature, especially when you're starting up your software, if you've got it set to mute when you start it up, now you have a way without having the software open to actually get your mains muted or unmuted, whatever the case may be. If you do want to attempt to set up your own configuration, I'll just show you quickly what you need to do. So I'm going to stop this so we disconnect. I'm going to open the configuration editor and I'm going to choose new configuration. Um, let's call it test. You need to choose your model. Um, so I've got the X touch under Mac control. My input device is X touch. My output device is X touch. And really that, oops put a name up here, my bad. Let's call this test session again, just so it's a little bit different from the name of the controller. Um, and then we choose our mixer, which is going to be X Air. Now, once you've set that up, you click OK. Um, there's faders and or knobs without mapping. Do you want to map them automatically? This is recommended and you might as well start there. So you choose yes. And what you can see is that in the simulation mode, we're actually picking up our fader moves right away. Now, it's not going to reflect everything here, but what it does do is let you know that you are connected. So this is where you start creating your own things. You can, oops, go out of simulation mode and into edit mode. You can select parameters, you can select buttons, and then go into the edit values and choose whether you want MIDI controller or keyboard. Obviously you want MIDI controller. You're gonna choose test, which is what we're working on. You choose your appropriate channel, and then you choose what you want to do. Again, this has a learning curve, so we're not gonna talk about that. I just wanted to show you really quickly how to get into this mode if you wanna start messing around yourself. If you do, and you do manage to figure it out and get things working, I'd love to hear about it, so please post something in the comments and let us know. So all in all, the pretty cool piece of software, not free, but not very expensive. And there is a 30 day trial so you can give it a run and make sure it's gonna do what you want it to do. I think you're gonna be pretty happy with it if you've always wanted to have synchronization between your controller and your software. And with that, another successful setup. I hope you found this interesting or entertaining. And if you found it either of those things, be sure to like and subscribe and share all the normal stuff. Check us out on Patreon if you wanna help out the channel. And until we see you next time here on Quick and Easy Quickies, thanks for watching.